Hey everybody, welcome back to the D2 Restore Rebuild series. I think I did more than enough talking in the last video, so let's just get right into it. Day, like I said, I got work in kind of short bursts here. I've already been through all of this, and I replaced that seal that goes into the injection pump that's known to go bad and this gasket and the gasket between the injection pump and the governor so we're going to start by just taking all this stuff off uh, and setting it aside um, it's going to need some paint but internally this is all ready to go so to get the governor off we got to take the cover off to get at the mounting screws All this just gonna get cleaned up and painted right away because this is small enough I can do it inside. We have a little paint booth at work I can use too. Last time I took this thing off it was full of diesel fuel. I only put maybe a half hour worth of time on this since I got it running. So let's see if the new gasket I made is doing better. Stop dropping bolts! Place that gasket, but it is definitely dry, so that's good. So now that we're in there, you can see one, two, three, four, five, and then two on the bottom. Little nuts, a couple bolts, pull those off, and then disconnect. Recommend you disconnect the governor linkage first and then do that, but you know what I'm going at, so. Best way to do this is to undo this castle nut. So you have to take this whole linkage off. But you want to undo this nut and this nut. Drop this link first, and then you can rotate it so that this screw doesn't hit the governor spring. It's 7 sixteenths on the inside. here that this paint is just uh, it's just not great so we'll redo that it is pretty nice to see that my repairs to the injection pump stayed good what I'm doing is disconnecting the drain plug for the injection pump to drain the oil into this bucket. So this part gets a little funky. We have, uh, I believe it's seven, nine sixteenths bolts, or half inch bolts to remove here. Two on this side, one on this side, three on the back, one on the bottom. Seven nuts gotta come off here. I believe this one is on the other side so it doesn't interfere with the cover of the injection pump. Part 
of the machine, same as the governor, is just paint on uh, paint on paint on paint on dirt. So we're gonna have to clean that up. I'm gonna take this little access cover off. This little access cover on the uh, on the fuel tower. Because behind that really smells like diesel in here now. Shocking. Alright. So behind that little cover. There's a, uh, and this is always fun, there's a little cotter pin in the back, pin in the front, and we got to get that out because that's what is uh, connected to the fuel rack on the injection pump. Pull this pin out, and we are disconnected. Alright, so now the injection pump can just slide right off. But before I take that off, I just want to remind everybody, uh, always cover the, the pumps up, keep anything from getting in there. Uh, I'm going to try and pull this gasket off without wrecking it any farther, because if I can, I like to make my gaskets directly off the old gaskets, it's a little easier to trace. And uh, at least it stayed in one piece, but that's definitely not going to seal like it should. Next, we're going to start working on the fuel tower. Alright, so right now what I'm doing is disconnecting this bottom drain line from the bottom of the fuel pump. So that we can remove the fuel components. Uh, everything, this is pretty much just a main uh, drain line for all the components. It all tees in here and just drips out the bottom of the tractor. Um, there's a line that goes up to the injectors. There's a line from the top of the fuel tower. But uh just don't want to damage that. So that's loose. Next what we're going to do is undo these two nuts and these two nuts that's it to take the fuel pump off of the fuel tower That's the fuel pump off. One less thing. Alright, next I'm going to take and release the drain. And this is the drain for the filter housing. There's probably still some fuel in here. I was right. Alright, so really the only reason this whole um, fill or uh, drain spout here has to come off um, to get this nut off better, take the spout off, will make life easier. Alright, so those same. Those same studs that came out with the injection pump that weren't supposed to uh, also run all the way through the fuel tower and into the intermediate cover. So there's still one of them in there. I made sure I took the nut off of it. And then on the front side, there's three nuts 
on studs into the intermediate cover and another one on the bottom. Make life a little easier. Alright, so it seems like the fuel tower is getting kind of hung up on the accessory shaft because of the seal on the uh, uh, the sleeve that the seal sits in. So uh, there's a couple of uh, quarter 20 tapped holes on there and that's just for uh, basically just using these nuts to push it out of the casting so that it's not hanging anything up anymore. a bit more of a task than I expected it to be it seems like it was the same problem I had when I was pulling the starter pinion out is that the dude before me just had so much sealer on the gasket that it pretty much glued it to the intermediate case but all right last thing we're gonna do on this side before I call it wrap up this video is we're gonna pull this bolt off of the uh, crankcase access port and we're gonna remove all this hosing and copper tubing from the side and set that away so that it doesn't get any more damage than it already is. Alright, and I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. Um, next thing we're going to do is probably go to the other side, start stripping that down, um, and we'll work our way to the front and just keep taking pieces off one piece at a time. I'm probably going to start painting some of these smaller pieces. and that, That's not worth filming, it's just painting. So, until next time guys, uh, thanks for watching. It's nice that we finally got some work done on this, and uh, we're just going to keep it moving, so stay tuned for more.